Hey, it's Random Code here, and today in this video, I'm going to showcase and talk about how I created a simple application that visualizes greedy best first search. So, in my last video, I showcased a few examples of just a running program because I thought that would be interesting. So, that's more or less just a two minute montage with some music just showcasing random situations where we run this greedy best first search. We have this setup, we have a start node, a goal node, and then able to create walls. And it then uses greedy best first search, first find a path or find the goal, and then it backtracks to find the best path based on the search so far. And just quickly, how it actually works is that with greedy best first search, we would, as mentioned, have a start position. We then have some kind of goal position, and we will then have a heuristic, which is, in this case, or specifically an admissible heuristic. Which means it's a it's definition for each spot, or normally it would be in a graph, it would be for each node, but in this case it's for each square. It then defines how good is this square when in regards to getting closer to the goal. And I've just showcased that I calculate my heuristics, in this case actually very simply, by simply doing what's the distance from the square, which is the corner of the square, to the goal. And as you can see, because each square is 50 times 50, our, our goal, of course, have a heuristic of zero, which means it's the goal. As long as we're just going, for example, horizontally or vertically, we're going to be staying in like 0, 50, 100, 150, and so on. And of course, diagonally, or any position, we then just simply calculate just using some basic math. And because I'm using an anchor pane in JavaFX, it's kind of like a grid or coordinate system. So I can simply just take the position here here and then just use basic math to calculate what's the distance between these two spots in my coordinate system. And what's very important about a heuristic is that it needs to be all, always as good or better than a solution. So for example, the best possible path would always be just directly from here to here. So this heuristic is good because it's never going to be worse than the path, which is quite important to understand. It can't be worth, but it needs to be as good as this path or better, which means in this case, it's always going to be the best path. But because let's say we have a, a wall somewhere in between, and we show the heuristics, we find the path, it searches and then find the path. So this part, for example, is better than the runs around it and it's important to understand red means it's been searched and blue means it's the best path. For example, this spot is heuristic of 212. So this one is better because it's closer to the goal, but because we need to go around this wall, it's not the best spot or it's not a spot that's used in the final path. So I hope that gives a basic understanding of the concept. And then actually quite a lot of this code is simply used to create this setup. I'm able to like change the size of the squares and of course reset my, my pathfinding tool here. I can create the walls, I can then create the goal, I can create the dot, I can erase as well, and I can find a path and backtrack to find the best path. So I just thought this is a very cool tool, just the uh, actually just being able to draw these scenarios and then just have them run in real time and just see them, it's actually quite amazing. And this is actually one of the tools I always want to create, so it is, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay, let's actually have a look at some of the code. As mentioned, quite a bit of this code is used to just create the graphical user interface and the ability to draw, to reset. But just a general walkthrough, we have some lists containing our nodes, our paths, we keep track of the size of our a screen, we calculate how many tiles we have. A lot of this actually just used to simply draw the tiles and we have these tiles in the different colors. We have the two colors, uh, background color one and two. So technically I would have any two colors be the background, but you choose this white and a gray. So the grids, which we also could change. We have the playback speed, so how fast are these paths drawn? Because actually calculation is, is very, very fast and it's calculated in less than a second. But then afterwards, when getting information and then kind of like drawing it to the screen. So we're not calculating while drawing, we're calculating first and then drawing afterwards. 
I'll have my graph node, sister, and I should mention that this graph node is a class I created myself, which contains more than just the basic information of a node, which contains a rectangle position of this node, and then your heuristic we just discussed, so how close it is to the goal, whether or not it has been visited, and then an i and j value, which is kind of like their position general. So let's say this is. Let's make the grid a bit smaller. This is the first square, so it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, and then, so kind of like a relative coordinate system. Then create the graphs and then have a lot of getters and setters. All this. So just a plain Java class that simply contains like a connection to the rectangle. So how where it's drawn, the specific graph node, but also allow us to do more basic calculations based on kind of like a graph concept. We then have some our anger panes, the text fields, most of the inputs. We then have this a box which is used to change what we're drawing blanks, the walls, the goal, the dot, and so on. And we can change the colors, these information are set in the inside here. Initialize, we have an update grid which more or less just draws the squares and then either set the colors to background color one or two, have some inputs. So whenever we are getting some input of the mouse, so whenever we are like clicking or dragging, I just take this position of the mouse and then pass it to a draw rectangle, which simply just draws or calculates which square are we on, and then change the square to based on what has been picked inside the combo box. We then clear the pane, which again just kind of like removes everything and then just draws it again. And then have this greedy best first search algorithm, which is actually not that complicated. But how it works, more or less, is that we have a... Let's see if I can kind it. So we have a bunch of setup. We first find the goal node, find the start node, and set up all the nodes, so find where do we have walls, more or less. But then make sure that we have nothing from previous runs. We then start, or call, best for search. So we can run the search algorithm based on the start position. And if we can find it down here, it's not that complicated, but more or less it's based all on our priority queue. So we would then first start at our start position, and we would then have a look and say why the queue is not empty, or why the queue is empty. So we we'll just keep going until we can't go anymore. Uh, we then have our start position. We would then go through all the neighbor nodes. We access the current node, start node, then set the current node to be visited. So we're not going to backtrack because that's not really how it would work. We then get all the neighbor nodes, which in this case would be all the nodes around, and then then just add it to the queue. So we add all the neighbor nodes, and inside this queue, our graph nodes are going to be prioritized based on the heuristics. So then the best node, which is the node closest to the goal, will then be the next node we're going to be focusing on, like the next current node. And that's how we always just take the best node. And you can see like in this case where it's a simple solution, where it's always just the best node from here on is the best node. But if we do something that's a bit more complex, like this example, it will then kind of search here. But then because we're having all the old neighbors in our queue at some point we're going to end up being out of this so i think it might be a bit it's not complex to understand but just the basic understanding we are first searching all the best solutions here and then at some point we're going to move out to the best solutions here so this is at some point we're going to end up being out here because this is the best of all the possible solutions because all the other solutions that were better has been searched or tried but these had no neighbors at some point, all the neighbors were visited, and then we will be forced to go like around this obstacle. I hope that made some sense. Otherwise, what I always suggest is simply just have a look at the code. I think I'll link just, uh, yeah, I'll just put a link in the description to this GitHub 
project where you can actually just go through it and maybe pull it down, try running it, play around with it, if you get it working. But I would mention the code is not the most pretty in this project so far, because it was just a little, I don't know, a little fun experiment. I wanted to try to see if I could actually create a visualization that looked kind of good. I actually think I managed, so I think it's pretty good. But then after running this press for search, which is what you're seeing like the first part of this run, which is when we turn everything red, I would then afterwards start a backtracking, where we then simply find, based on all the searched, all the, all the, yeah, based on all the searched areas, all searched squares, we then find the best path backwards. So kind of like doing the same search just backwards using only searched fields. We're then doing it down here in the find path traversal, which is more or less just the same thing. Take a look for all the neighbors that's been searched, and then from these find now not the best heuristic, so not the smallest, but then the largest, because that would move us back to the goal, back to the start position. And then of course I have a bunch of helper functions like calling the rectangles used to draw stuff, and then just the setup that find the neighbors of a specified node. So I hope this made some sense. I might have been rambling a bit too much about this, but I actually think this is a very interesting project and just a basic concept of being able to visualize search algorithms or basic artificial intelligence like greedypress for search is kind of interesting. And because this is a bit more complex version of greedypress for search where we also have like the visited component, it's actually almost the same as A star, not exactly because A star is not using just plain heuristics. We then get the heuristic based on both, or we we'll calculate the value or the how good a square is based on both the heuristic and how far we traveled from the start. But I think it's gonna be work actually more or less the same way in this case because it's it's very similar. However, that is my showcase, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.